20 years ago, Nigel Tomlin retired to his family farm in Tasmania's picturesque Derwent Valley. But rather than opt for the quiet life, he came up with an unusual way to spend his retirement. With the help of his son, Nigel Tomlin built his own hydroelectricity scheme and in the next two months hopes to supply power to around 500 local homes, as Fiona Breen reports. I think it looks all right. Deep in the bush in Tasmania's lush southern forests, a father and son are working on a dream. Nigel and Josh Tomlin have an ambitious plan to harness the power of the river. Farming is quite challenging and um, I do enjoy a challenge. I've always had a passion for um, water and the power of water and what it can do. Nigel Tomlin is the fourth generation on the farm, but he's always had to supplement his family's income with another paycheck. He spent 25 years in the hydroelectricity industry, the whole time harbouring the seeds of an idea. I've gained a lot of knowledge over um, a long time working in this area, um, so I'd like to, to see some good come of that. The Tomlins have been working on their Humboldt River hydropower scheme for the past few months. They're now at the pointy end of the project, laying the last few hundred metres of pipeline alongside the river. It will carry water diverted from the top of the river down to a turbine to be installed in the small Riverstone power station at the bottom of the hill. We're not even going to put a machine where we're standing here to extract the water um, from this river. So a, a very passive way uh, of one of the most environmentally friendly uh, ways of getting renewable energy. Which is essentially gravity. It's gravity, yeah. yeah it's simple physics. You drop a, something from a height that has energy, we're capturing that. Once up and running, the scheme will channel 48% of the river's water down the pipe to the turbine each year. That water will be returned back to the Humboldt River, two and a half kilometres downstream. The same as um, a fish farm would perhaps use, to take a bit of water out of the river, go through their fish farm, put back in the river. Or um, water mills, for instance, have been doing it, say, in, uh, in Europe for years and years, thousands of years even, take water out run a bit of a water mill back in the river. So it's a non-consumptive use of water. It's not like we're watering a, a paddock and that water is lost to evaporation. It will be returned downstream once it goes through our pipe. By the time the water travels through the pipe and meets the turbine, it's dropped 95 metres downhill and built up a lot of momentum. The force generating power once it hits the turbine. It's just like you with a hose and cl cleaning a, um, a paint roller. You put force of water on and it spins, it spins, a, it spins a wheel. By May, the system should be in full operation, sending two gigawatt hours of electricity annually to the grid, enough to service much of the local region and about 500 homes. At full load, for instance, in the winter time, um, power won't be coming into the valley at all. In fact, that the power we're generating will go out of the valley, which I'm, we're very proud of to be able to have. And a lot of the locals uh, are involved with this project. We have local contractors who live in the valley, builders, etc. And it's really a, a good feeling for them to be contributing to their own uh, homegrown power scheme, if you like. Um, and you are locals. And we are locals. We live up the road. So it, that's a really special feeling, which we, um, I guess, didn't really appreciate before we started, just how, uh, how good it would make us feel and make the whole valley uh, feel. Nigel Tomlin's journey back into the hydroelectricity industry started just down the road at the family farm in Ellendale, 
a hamlet at the foothills of the Mountfield National Park. He'd retired to the farm 10 years ago, but as he worked on the property, his mind was elsewhere, formulating plans for future power generation. I have a number of cattle, grow Vila breeding cows, which um, we sell at, when at weaning time. I have a cherry orchard, and um, I've, I've put in some um, eucalypt plantations, and I did grow uh, seed crops. But the farming wasn't enough? No, farming wasn't enough. Um, wasn't enough from a financial point of view. Um, farming's quite risky, and um, you know, we, we found that we had to diversify in other things, and um, which we could do on the farm, such as the, the cottage and the, and the power station. With the property ideally placed at the base of a stream, he couldn't resist tapping in. Alongside his farm work, Nigel Tomlin created the prototype for his Humboldt River scheme at the bottom of his own garden. It's now pumping out 100 megawatt hours a year, enough to power the 30 houses of Ellendale. So it has taken 30 years. It was quite a relief when we we did get approval to connect to the grid. This project here was completed in very short time because I had 30 years to think of um, how I was going to do it and where I was going to put it and how I was going to go about it. So the whole project was done um, in, a, in a very short time. It's diverting the water from the top of the Jones River, which runs through the property. The water travels through a 500 metre long pipe to the small power station below. So this here is the start of a different life for you, really, because you were heading down the farming track. I was heading down the farming track, yes, and um, so I, had a, I always have a change of direction. If you go and come in there, you'll be right. The family's future in hydroelectricity, however, is uncertain. They received a $700,000 boost from a federal government clean technology grant to help turn the Humboldt River scheme into a reality. That funding's been dropped by the Abbott government. The wholesale price of power has also dipped. Hydro is making us money at the moment, but we're a bit disappointed in legislation. We went ahead with the Humboldt scheme, and now we have a change of government, and that legislation is going to change. So that, um, that mucks up all our, our um, feasibility studies that we've done, and we've invested in. He mortgaged the farm to help fund the Humboldt project and unless there are more incentives for renewable energy projects in the future, he's not sure he'll take the risk again. If not, the farm might once again get Nigel Tomlin's full attention. It could be that this farmer's life will go full circle. Yeah, we, we can you know, lay down our tools and do that, but we don't want to do that. This is a, an excellent example of renew, renewable energy. So it's got, I think it's got huge potential. Whether I do it or whether it's done in generations time, but I think this is the future.